Page 7 of Vectors, 12D, Magnitude of a Vector. Consider that the vector v is um, expressed as x component 2, y component 3, or 2i plus 3j. Um, we could draw it kind of like that, 2 to the right and 3 up. Use Pythagorean's theorem to calculate the length of the vector v. So uh, v... If v squared is equal to 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is equal to um, 13. So uh, the length of vector v is equal to um, square root of 13. Square root of 13. And actually, we could write the length of vector v as absolute value of of uh, bold v. Unit vectors are vectors that have length of da, 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 1. Find the magnitude of vector uh, 3, 4. So this, again, you're just going to be using Pythagorean's theorem. 3, 4. Remember the old 3, 4, 5 triangle? 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. 2, 0, ooh, 2 to the right and 0 up, so the length would just be 2, this one the length would just be 3, uh, find the length of, let's see, 1i plus 1j, that would be a 45, 45, 90 triangle, so this would be the square root of 2 negative i plus 4j. So it would look kind of like this, negative plus 4. So uh, this would be 16 plus 1, and so the hypotenuse would be the square root of 17. Okay, square root of 17. Right? And kj. kj. So the length of this vector, since there's no i component, would just be k. All right, number three, which of the following are unit vectors? Okay, again, just use Pythagorean's theorem. You can see which ones are unit vectors. So this one, it would be zero to the right and negative one down, and it's negative one long. So yeah, that's a unit vector, yes. What about this one? It's two thirds to the right and one third down, and you might think, oh yeah, those add up to one, but be careful because it has to add up to one through Pythagorean's theorem. And this definitely is not going to add up to 1 in Pythagorean's theorem. So, no. Over 2, 7th, and down 5. And yeah, that adds up to 1, but the hypotenuse will not add up to 1. So, no, it's not. Okay. Find k for the unit vectors. Let's see. So, if these are going to be unit vectors, and the x component is 0, then the y component must be 1. What about this one? If uh, the y component is 1, then the x component must be 0, right? Because it's, it's 1 long. And then for this one, let's see, if the x component is a half, then what would be the y component? This could have more than one answer actually but so that's going to be one the x component is going to be 0.5 does that look familiar it's actually a 30 60 90 triangle so uh, this would actually be square root of 3 over 2 square root of 3 over 2 so k it would e equal square root of 3 over 2 and it could also be negative square root of 3 over 2 either one of those answers Five. Given that vector v is equal to 8 uh, in the x direction and p in the y direction, and the magnitude of vector v is square root of 73, find the possible values of p. So let's see. Again, just, it's just like Pythagorean's theorem. So um, we got 8 in this direction, and then we have p in this direction, and it just so happens to be that the hypotenuse is square root of 73, 
we used Pythagorean's theorem. We did 8 squared plus p squared equals 73 square root squared. So that's equal to 64 plus p squared equals 73. So p squared is actually equal to, and we subtract 64 from both sides, we get 9. So p is equal to plus or minus 3. Those are the two possibilities for p. So it could be a triangle uh, above the x-axis, or it could be a triangle below the x-axis. Um, e, operations with plane vectors. Let's see, vector A is equal to A1 in the x direction, A2 in the y direction. Vector B is equal to B1 in the x direction and B2 in the y direction. If you're going to add uh, A plus B, like we've done many times geometrically with drawings, all you have to do is add the two x components together and add the two y components together, and then that gives you a new vector, which is the two vectors added together. So actually, that's all explained right here, and there's a very nice drawing also. Okay. Uh, let's move on to page 8, because we've got enough time. Algebraic negative vectors. Okay, so we've talked about negative vectors. We've shown them geometrically. Drawings. Now we're going to look at them algebraically. So if we have two vectors, just like we did before, uh, how about if we subtract the b vector from the a vector. So to do that, we're going to add the negative of the b vector. And so that's what the negative of the b vector looks like. We just multiply negative 1 times each of the components inside the b vector. And so then we just use the same rule we did before. And now instead of, and when we add it, when we add the negative b1, which it just turns out to look like that, okay? And let's see, now we're going to take a, a real example with a component vector with x component 1 and y component 3. Um, if we multiply the a vector by 2, we're just going to add the components, uh, the x components 1s together and the x component 3s together, and we get um, that. Okay, and you can see that actually that's multiplying the x component by 2 and multiplying the y component by 3. Uh, now for 3a, we just multiply them by 3, so then we would end up with 3 in the x direction and 9 in the y direction. Last of all, if k is, a sca is any scalar and v is equal to v1 over v2, then k uh, times the vector equals and we can just multiply k times each of the individual components like that. What about if we multiply negative 1 times the vector? What do we get? Well, effectively, we get the negative vector. Okay. What if we multiply the scalar 0 times the vector? What do we get? We get the 0 vector. Okay. Number 1. If A is this vector, if B is this vector, and C is this vector, find A plus B. Well, we're just going to add the components together. Okay, so for A plus B, we're just going to add negative 3 to 1, and we get negative 2. We add 2 to 4, and we get 6. Okay, and then A plus C, uh, we're going to add the negative 3 to the negative 2. And then we're going to get negative 5. And then we're going to add the 2 to the negative 5, and we get negative 3. What about BC? BC, we're going to add the 1 to the negative 2, we're going to get negative 1. We add the 4 to the negative 5, we get negative 1. What about A plus A? We're just going to add the A to itself. So negative 3 plus negative 3 would be negative 6. 2 plus 2 is 4. 3. Consider the vector A is equal to A1 and A2. Use vector addition to show that vector a plus the zero vector is just equal to vector a. Okay, so we'll take a1 and a2, which is the vector a, and we're going to add the zero vector, which is just the two components are both zero. And then we're going to add individually the components. This may seem absurdly obvious to you. 
And what do you know? You get the A vector back. But a lot of times proofs are like that. Okay, uh, for P is equal to 1, 5, Q is negative 2, 4, and R is negative 3, negative 1, fine. So the first one it says multiply the scalar negative 3 times each of the components in P. So that will give you negative 3 and negative 15. Now what about this one? P, 1, 5, minus 1 half of R, which is negative 3, negative 1. So that would be 1, 5, oops, I didn't mean to make that into a fraction, 1, 5, and then I'm going to multiply the negative 1 half times each, and so I'm going to get 1.5, and then I'm going to get 0.5, and that will give me 2.5 and 5.5, 5. 5.5. 5. 2.5 and 5.5. Is that right? Yes, okay. Uh, and then what about this? 2p plus q. So 2p would be 210 plus q would be negative 2, 4, and that'll be 0 and 6. Okay, and this one, 2q would be negative 4, 8, minus 3r would be, I'm going to multiply that out here, so negative 4, 8, and then I'm going to multiply the negative 3 there, so I'll get a positive 9, multiply the negative 3 there, and I get a positive 3, and I change that to a plus in the middle. So that will be a 5, 11. Okay. And that's it.